So I have to start, though, with a really interesting interview that took place yesterday. Jason Tatum was interviewed by Taylor Rooks on her Bleacher Report podcast, a fantastic podcast that she does. And it was very revealing. He talked about the aftermath of losing in the NBA Finals, talked about the viral pick with KD, and he even addressed part of his struggles in those NBA Finals and revealed that he was actually playing with a fractured wrist. And he talked about how he was feeling miserable after those finals. And the biggest reason why was because he felt like he left, he let his team down. And this is normal. This is to be expected whenever you talk to a professional athlete after they just played on the biggest stage of their career, the emotions when you're on the losing side, when you're part of the losing effort. And first of all, I commend him for the courage to even be a part of this interview and to be interviewed and to actually have to relive some of those perhaps traumatizing moments from your past, at least as it pertains to, to the professional sports world. And I'm actually going to defend Jason Tatum here because obviously after the NBA finals, there was a lot of blowback, a lot of criticism and a lot of judgment cast in his direction. A lot of negativity heaped his way. People were questioning his ability to lead. And even as a Lakers fan, I'm going to defend Jason Tatum here. Because if you've been watching me, if you've been watching this show, you know that I've always been a Jason Tatum supporter. I've always been a fan of his. I think, and I've thought since the first day that he was drafted, that he was going to be a franchise player. The way that he has impacted this Boston Celtics team, I never had a, had a doubt in my mind. Oh, this guy can be a transcendent type of basketball player. And when I sit in this chair, my intention is never to, to criticize these pro athletes because it is insanely hard to be actually good enough and to be able to perform at the level required to be a professional athlete. It's, ins it's insanely hard. And the only time I ever really judge or criticize a player is if I feel like they've played egregiously bad or perhaps there was some off-the-court, off-the-field transgression that deserves some reaction. But my intention is never, never to speak down on a player. It's to effusively praise them. And I enjoy praising these players, and Jason Tatum is one of these guys, because you look at his career, and I think people get too caught up with the end result versus the journey. All we see is, oh, Jason Tatum leader of the Celtics lost in the NBA Finals. But we don't think about the fact that he averaged 25 and a half points, seven rebounds, six assists throughout the postseason. Yes, in the finals, those numbers dipped to 21 and a half points per game. Still averaged seven rebounds, seven assists. And granted, it was an up and down finals form. He had two single digit finals games. And for a player of his ilk, that's certainly not supposed to be tolerated. And we expect a lot more. That, that is all true. And he did struggle. But that's, unfortunately, what the finals brings out. Your best player is going to be double, triple team. The defenses pick up. They know your tendencies. They know exactly where you're trying to go with the basketball. And they're shading you and hoping to send you into a different direction. That's what happens the higher level you play. And listen, I love Jalen Brown. He is a fantastic, fantastic player and an all-star caliber player. And, and there's a strong argument that he was actually the Celtics' best player in the NBA Finals. But the truth of the matter is the Celtics don't reach the NBA Finals if it's not for Jason Tatum. Did we forget the 30-point-per-game average in round one against KD, Kyrie, and the Nets, including his game-winning buzzer-beater uh, buzzer beater layup? Did we forget the 46 per point masterpiece on the road at Milwaukee? That was perhaps his signature game of his career. To send the series back to Boston, to give the Celtics a chance in game seven to advance to the Eastern Conference Finals. Did we forget how big this guy has come up year after year after year? And I will concede again, for someone as talented as he is, you don't expect him to be 
as up and down in the postseason. And especially we saw this against the Miami Heat. It was a grueling physical series. He's getting touched up every single play. Both sides. It was just laboring out there. But again, now it was revealed that he was playing with a wrist fracture. So it's a little bit more understandable. Now, I'm not saying that I'm going to give him a pass for the, for the fractured wrist. We've seen athletes play with injuries. Every athlete come postseason time has to overcome injuries. That's just a part of the game, unfortunately, especially at that time of the year. But to use some of those inconsistent performances as a referendum and to use it as additional fuel and fodder to doubt this man's abilities and capabilities is baffling to me. It's baffling to me. It's mind boggling. And it's just flat out wrong. It's just flat out wrong because I actually love Jason Tatum's demeanor. I love his disposition. He perfectly embodies his head coach, Ime Udoka. He never gets too high, never gets too low. Is internally extremely confident, but isn't too bombastic. He's not bombastic at all, actually. Now, sometimes can he, can he be humble to a fault? Do I love that he's second-guessing his ability to be a leader and be the best guy on a championship team publicly? No, I wouldn't ideally love if he said that to the media, but I never question it, question his talent or say, well, because he spoke publicly that he's incapable of leading this team. When you think about the characteristics needed in a superstar, in a franchise caliber player, they obviously have to be immensely talented. They have to possess winning intangibles and they have to be a leader. Well, the guy is immensely talented. He's one of the, the elite and most potent offensive scorers in the game. He's 6'8". We compare him to KD. He's lethal from everywhere. He's got no offensive flaws. Even defensively, he's proving to be a menace when he wants to be. And, and Ime Udoka has gotten him to buy in on the defensive side of the ball. He's fantastic defensively. And then you look at his winning intangibles. Well, ever since he was drafted third overall in 2017, and now he's been in the NBA five complete seasons, in five seasons, he's reached the postseason every single year. Every single season, he's been with the Celtics. They've made the playoffs. They've reached one NBA Finals, one trip to the NBA Finals, three trips to the Eastern Conference Finals in five seasons. Three-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA player, including a first-team All-NBA player, an Olympic gold medalist. The guy has proven that he wins everywhere he goes. Now, from the leadership perspective, could he be a little bit more vocal as a leader? Sure. But his actions speak louder than words. You look at the Golden State Warriors, Steph Curry isn't necessarily the leader, the emotional leader. That's Draymond Green, but he's the engine, Steph is. He's the magic elixir that gets everything to go. And I don't think the Celtics attain nearly any of the success that they've been able to attain over the last five years since Jason Tatum's been drafted. Again, they reached the Eastern Conference Finals in the man's rookie season in the rookie season he dunked on lebron in game seven of the eastern conference finals in his rookie year so again if you're able to average 30 plus points per game and you can score 30 plus with a fractured wrist is it disappointing is it gravely disappointing when you drop 10 points in an nba finals game of course and there's no excuse for that and you should be able to continue to play at a higher level. But again, to just make these bold claims that all of a sudden this guy isn't a superstar, this guy isn't a franchise caliber player, I just think that that's, that's an erroneous take. It's just flat out wrong. And a lot of people are going to point to the fact that injuries – really perhaps propelled the Celtics this postseason. And that's certainly true. But we've seen injuries aid a lot of champions. Last two years ago, the Milwaukee Bucks. You could argue that if a healthy KD and, and Kai or healthy Kyrie and Harden were on the Nets, that the Nets beat the Bucks. Obviously this year the Celtics were fortunate that Chris Middleton wasn't a part of the series. 
But we've seen numerous times if the Raptors play the Warriors with a loaded KD and Klay Thompson healthy, they probably don't win the NBA title. So injuries can play a role. And I don't know if, if Jason Tatum and this current iteration of the Celtics are going to make it back to the NBA Finals. I don't know. But if they don't, I'm not going to use it as a slight and an indictment against Jason Tatum. I'm not going to do it. And I appreciated the fact that he sat down for this interview. He shed some light into the dynamics of his inner workings, his inner thinking, and the team. And again, this is a Lakers guy complimenting the Celtics. They drafted the right guy. He's a special, special player. And again, all he's done every single year he's been in the NBA is improve. He's improved individually. The team's improved. The chemistry, the cohesiveness has improved. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he's able to continue to accomplish throughout the rest of his career.